here we are. Our furry little friends. They're just so cute, so sweet. We love them. And he's on the grooming table. He is the perfect dog. Aren't they cute? He's a licker. They're so funny. You love them. Mini Cat Town is on track to save 300 kittens. Close up. They are together all the time. This dog is everything to us. Cuddly. I love how soft they feel. And did we mention cute? Good boy. This is Pet Project. We can have a good time here. <laughs> I don't want to just teach them how to swim. I want them to enjoy the water. It's all about positive. Putting the toys in there, making it fun. Letting mom and dad get in there. We have Noe Noel. She's about 15. She doesn't have any eyes. And she has a torn ACL that was not able to be repaired. This is the only thing she can do, swim. And once the dog realizes it's all about them, it's like, okay, okay, this is cool. We, we, can, we can have a good time here. I got a chicken, chicken, chicken. And they really start to like rummies after that. My name is Lisa Goble. We're at Rummies Beach Club in Spring, Texas. So it's a private dog park. And inside that private dog park is a private dog pool. Rummy's was inspired by Rummy. Rummy was a blind Siberian Husky who was found on the streets of Houston and I agreed to foster him. And we entered him in a contest and he ended up winning that contest in Hollywood. And Rummy won $5,000 of dog food for the rescue organization. To win, Rummy had to go out and meet people and get them to vote for him. And that's where the inspiration happened. Watching people meet Rummy and start following Rummy and getting down on the floor and just laying with him and letting him kiss him. And he inspired so many people in so many ways and I wanted to take that bond and those emotions and do something with it. And so I bought this place. I learned more about swimming with dogs and here we are. <laughs> when you come to Rummy's, the entire facility is yours. Because it's private, that attracts a lot of people that have dogs with issues. My adult wolfhound fell into two different pools at friends' houses in the backyard, and it startled him, so he panicked and actually started to drown. Because he's 150 pounds, that was just dangerous for both of us, for me to try to rescue him. So I started him on swimming lessons here so that hopefully he can start saving himself. Good boy! We brought Yogi Bear, he's 12. He's had juvenile cataracts his whole life. He only sees shadows. We have Noe Noel, she's about 15. She doesn't have any eyes. And she has a torn ACL that was not able to be repaired. This is the only thing she can do, is swim. And then we have our three-legged mini, and the benefits for her have been amazing. So when you come here and you watch your dogs run around, and you haven't ever been able to, to see your dog do that, I've had people just start crying because they're watching their dog be a dog, and it's like, oh my God, I've never seen my dog do that. Today I brought Coco and Sadie. We've been coming six years, my girls love it. Um, I brought Sadie because she's overweight, and it's hard for her to do any exercise out in the summer because it's too hot. So the perfect thing is to be in the cool water. And Coco, she's not very social with other people or dogs. So this is private, so she can come and do her thing and not be worried about other people or dogs. Because some of the dogs that come here have issues, it, it doesn't happen in five minutes. It doesn't happen in five minutes for normal dogs. But with scared dogs or handicapped dogs or dogs that are older, there's all kinds of things we can do within the water, but getting them used to just enjoying water is the secret. My sisters and I, we rescued 80 kittens out of our house, and it was just getting way too overwhelming. So then we decided we needed to find a place to have our kittens be adopted and like be seen. My name is Twa Bui, and I am one of the co-founders of Mini Cat Town. 
So in a nutshell, Mini Cat Town is part adoption center and part kitten lounge. Every year when it starts to get warm around March, April, something called kitten season starts and that's just when cats just start having babies. The San Jose Animal Care Center gets about 5,000 orphan kittens a year. So essentially kittens that are under a pound at the shelter can't survive in a kennel by themselves. They're a life that can't survive without us and that we're basically the first step into the next part of their lives. We take them when they're itty bitty and then we raise them and then we adopt them out. Everyone working together to save lives. I like the opportunity to have my granddaughter interact with, with the kittens and understand that they're not toys. I don't have one at home or I don't have like any large animals so it's nice to be able to like pick them up and play with them. They're cute and I love how soft they feel. I like playing with them and I get to really learn how to take care of cats. We've adopted out about 85 since we've opened, which bl which blows our record out of the water from last year. We did 80 the entire kitten season. Mini Cat Town is on track to save 300 kittens, but essentially we need 300 homes. Um, so I'm really relieved and satisfied when people walk through the door and they say, hey, I want a kitten. I think it's really important to help these kittens because they wouldn't otherwise survive. <laughs> We as a rescue serve the kittens in our community because it's important to us that somebody helps them and we just, we're just that somebody. Still to come on Pet Project. They are together all the time. He's still a happy little boy and he's happier because of the dog. And later. Cats are different. You know, that's, that's sort of their instinct is to find a place where they can feel in control of their, their domain. You're watching Pet Project. It's amazing. Cheers has changed Tariq's life in more ways than I can even describe. They are together all the time. They go to school together, basically everywhere together. They have a very unique bond that I really can't even describe. It's amazing. This dog is everything to us. We're Reed's parents. Reed is nine years old. He was born with spinocerebellar ataxia, type eight, about a year after he was born. If you look at an image of his brain, his cerebellum is about half the size of what it should be, which then affects his fine motor skills, his speech, and his ability to walk. Reed needed a walker to walk for a very long time. The walker became unsafe because he was walking too quickly in it. I had the idea that if we could find another option for him, I would pursue that. We found the organization that we got cheers from for Pause for Ability. Cheers is a standard poodle. Cheers is trained in three main services. Number one is mobility. He helps Reed walk farther, safer, longer than he otherwise would be able to. The second service that he is trained in is called behavior distraction. Reed's nonverbal. Even though he has an alternative talking device. I want a pizza with cheese. He will occasionally get very frustrated when he can't get his point across. The dog will help him calm down when he starts to get frustrated. The third service that he provides is alert. Let's say Reed falls, the dog will bark. And that will tell me that I need to go look for Reed and make sure that he's okay. The fourth thing Cheers does for Reed is brings him into a more social situation with other kids in the school. He's a social bridge. I like to say that Reed is not the child with special needs. I want other kids to think about Reed as the kid with the dog. So when children want to pet the dog, they have to ask Reed. That socialization brings Reed closer to his classmates. He was named Cheers because he was born around New Year's. We certainly couldn't have come up with a better name because, like in the show, Cheers, uh, everybody knows your name. So now everybody in our neighborhood knows Reed because of Cheers. He's just made life just that much easier. He's still a happy little boy, and he's happier because of the dog. Just being there with him, just knowing that his companion, his best friend, is right there. 
Thank God for Cheers. We care for little tiny kittens anywhere from days old to weeks old. Volunteering, I basically structure my life around volunteering here. I know that sounds crazy, but I'm retired. My time is my own, and I have a set schedule of when I work, and I will fit everything else around that because you come in here, and these guys, they're just so cute, so sweet, so loving. You get a kitten this size to start purring, and all's right with the world. I mean, this is, this is just, they need something so basic, I'm able to give it. Caring for these guys is a 24-7 operation because neonatal kittens, especially the ones that are under four weeks old, they need care anywhere between every two to four hours. Oh my goodness, you are so precious. It's funny. People don't often realize that kittens, neonatal kittens, especially the, the really young ones, are the most at risk at shelters. Once they're about five to six weeks old, they can start eating on their own. And it's interesting because a lot of these mama kittens don't look much older than a kitten themselves. And that's because kitten, cats can get pregnant at just four months old and their pregnancy cycle is two months. By the time they're just a year old, a female cat can have multiple litters. We need fosters for all these kittens. So if you're an insomniac <laughs> or you just like getting up every couple hours or you have a big family and people can take shifts, it would be great to take some of our bottle babies. Coming up. You see a pink poodle walking down the street. That pink poodle is going to get more attention than that black poodle. And later on Pet Project. I talked to a friend about what I should do with my time, she said, why don't you go cat house? I thought, okay, well, what would I do as an architect? What would I say as an architect? You're watching Pet Project. This is awesome. I'm Rebecca Stern. I'm a documentary filmmaker. I directed Well Groomed, and this is Adrian Pope one of the dog groomers in the movie. Hi, my name is Adrian Pope. I'm from Conway, South Carolina. And this is my dog, Gucci. He's a toy poodle. Uh, he has a little bit of color on him right now. He has a, a black on his head and I have red on his paws. Oh, and he also has, this was done a few weeks ago. He has oh, Mickey Mouse on his back, but it's growing out. <laughs> How long have you been doing dog grooming, Adrian? I have been a dog groomer since 1992. Encore loves the grooming table. When he's on the grooming table, he is the perfect dog. He doesn't really like a lot of people, but he's definitely coming out of his shell. He's taking a while for people to get used to him, but he loves the grooming table, and he's kind of connected to me. Some people think it's mean, and the dogs don't love it. If the dogs don't love what, what you see, what we do, there's no way they would let us do it. They definitely get more attention than the average dog. If you see a pink poodle walking down the street or just a regular black poodle, that pink poodle is gonna get more attention than that black poodle. Their tail's wagging and they enjoy it. I mean, Encore will push you off a table to get on a table and at the photo shoot that Rebecca can vouch for that. If he saw a table and if he wasn't on a leash or if I didn't have him on a tight leash, the very first thing he'd do is jump on that table yeah. before we even got to the uh, spot we're supposed to be at. I would say within that year of 2017, I probably put 75 hours of time standing in front of the table over the nine month period grooming Encore. Well, when I'm doing a, uh, a large dog like Encore, I probably put probably at least three to five hundred dollars and die on him. Of course, when I go to a dog show, I cannot go to a dog show without spending money. I love to buy shampoos, new products, and then also spend money on my props and presentation. So tell, tell us about your businesses. Do you work with dogs? I assume so. <laughs> I actually have a mobile grooming business. I started in 1994. I've been mobile 
since then. So I'm going on 25 years this July. And then in 2004, we opened a boarding kennel at our house. So I, you know, work with dogs, I would say seven days a week. I'm pretty much never without a dog, except when we go to a restaurant to go to dinner. I love to do my creative grooming and go to the dog shows to do creative. Go to wellgroomfilm.com and see a screening near you. If the film festival is coming to a town near you, you need to go watch it. Well groomed, it's well worth it. You can check us out on Facebook and Instagram too. Coming up. Come on. We provide pet therapy to patients. If you're having a bad day, just having a big floppy dog show up it makes everybody happy. You're watching Pet Project. Sit. Good boy. Have your paw. Okay, Rocco, come on. Let's go for a visit. Hi, how are you? Hi. This is Rocco. Mm -hmm. We're at the um, Summit Medical Group Cancer Center in Florham Park, New Jersey. Hi, Did they get Jan. dressed up for the occasion? He did, he's wearing I his just, best hope tuxedo. So. Creature Comfort Pet Therapy is a program that we provide pet therapy to patients and to students, and we provide comfort to people who can benefit from some pet therapy. to be photographed from his best side. <laughs> we rescued Rocco in 2011. I saw him, we locked eyes, and I said, that's a great dog, I'm taking him home. He's so pretty, aren't you? He's a licker. He's so pretty. <laughs> so I read the book, A Dog's Purpose, and he was next to me, of course, because that's all he does. He spends his days next to me. And I turned to him and I said, Rocco, what's your purpose? And I said, you know, he'd probably make a really good therapy dog. He's really good with people, he loves people, he loves kids. So I started researching pet therapy and I found Creature Comfort Pet Therapy. We have 500 volunteers and half of them have four legs. This is very helpful. Good, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Boy, oh boy, you're making yourself really involved. comfortable now. Yay! <laughs> How long have we been doing this? Three years. Wow. Three years. Yeah. Sit. Good boy. Have your paw? My first visit, it's called your mentor visit. We went to an adult care center. They're adults with special needs. It was so much fun. You go in and they had just had lunch and this one man had just had meatloaf. And he let Rocco lick all of the meatloaf off his face. And he was like, this is awesome. Hey, how are you? If you're having a bad day, just having a big floppy dog, Show up is wonderful. You know, it makes everybody happy. I just, I love it. It's the high point of, of the day. It's very calming, you know, very calming. And, and they are, they're little therapists is what they are. When we go on these visits, obviously it's 90% dog. And it is the human connection as well. When someone is getting treatment, I can sit down and I could just talk to them. How are you feeling? Or just take their mind off of what's going on as, as best as I can. So how are you feeling today? Good. Good. I'm looking down at the roots, not up at the roots. It's a good day, baby. And people get to know you. And you come in and there's, oh, Rocco, Rocco. But I think what the best is they really don't know what my name is. And I'm totally cool with that. It's just, oh, Rocco's here. And I'm like, yes, Rocco. <laughs> goes here. Do you want a visit from Rocco? Okay. So he's your dog. This is my puppy. The community, the fact that there are so many people who give up their time for no reason other than to pay it forward or give back or enrich the lives of other people, to me it's applaudable behavior. I think just going and sitting with people or being with kids and seeing that I can bring them some kind of comfort and joy. Just it just makes me feel good. I get comfort and joy out of it. <laughs> Did he lick it? <laughs> Sometimes it's just something that sparks my imagination about what would be interesting to see my cats on. That, that a lot of times is, is kind of the germ of the idea. I was more of an artist when I was in high school and junior high and didn't really know anything about architecture. And I had an uncle who said to me, well, you know, you're good at art, you're good at math and science, 
you should become an architect. As I started working, I realized that architecture was very fascinating. Just there's, there's just so much to explore with architecture. So I had some downtime and I talked to a friend about what I should do with my time. She said, why don't you build cat houses? And I thought, well, they like to climb, they like to be up high. So the first thing that I built was uh, was a lighthouse. Was really precautious about its scale and making sure that they had enough room to maneuver. So I kind of oversized it, but still to the proportion of a lighthouse. That was the first thing, and they really liked it to, to it. As I was building that, a friend, another friend, had seen the top of the lighthouse that I was working on, which I had painted red, and she said, "That looks like lifeguard stand." That's a great idea. I'm gonna, the next thing is was lifeguard stand. So these ideas just sort of came one after the other in rapid succession. Sometimes it's just something that sparks my imagination about what would be interesting to see my cats on. That, that a lot of times is, is kind of the germ of the idea. For me personally, aesthetically, I like to see the cats kind of stand out against the background of the dog. So a lot of times it'll be something sparked by an idea of the context or, or color of material, like if I'm using carpet. People really love the throne. Uh, the throne is one of the ones that we get requested a lot. In fact, two years ago, we, we shipped a throne and four music cat towers and a Ferris wheel to clients in Japan. But there are a lot, also a lot of times when a client will come to me, like we did a project for a client in California who has an amazing house. This house is completely outfitted for it. It's got 24 cats. He had one room that had an aquarium, you know, had a, a fish tank that they had just purchased with some exotic fish. And it was in a room right with a window. I said, well, Peter, why don't we pretend the fish tank is spilled into the room and we'll build a, a coral reef. This way the cats can sort of like look out the window. We can make a lot of interesting things with hand carved fish, with the sea turtle. We built a boat that mounted to the skylight. So the cats could jump from the reef up to the boat and look out the skylight. Again, it really depends on the client, what they're up for and the space that they have, um, the theme that they may have in their home. And that, that tends to be a, a spring point for our design. Cats, you have to kind of get into their world a little bit. And I think what what's different about cat people is that there's a willingness to go into their world. Cats are different. You know, that's that's sort of their instinct is to find a place where they can feel in control of their, their domain. So, distracted by my cat, actually. You're watching Pet Project. Follow Localish on social media.